Hello and welcome to part 3 of UV visible spectroscopy. From the previous videos, now we know that the compounds containing chromophores absorb radiations and some factors can change the value of lambda max. But it is very difficult to remember all the values of lambda max of various compounds. In this video, we will learn that how we can calculate the lambda max values of conjugated dienes. So let's get started. Woodward Fieser rule is used to calculate the absorption maxima for a given structure by relating the structure and substitutions on the compound. In 1945, Robert Burns Woodward gave some rules to correlate absorption maxima with molecular structure. In 1959, Louis Frederick Fieser modified these rules and now these rules are known as Woodward Fieser rule. To calculate the lambda max values of the compounds, we need to add the base values with the substituent contribution. Woodward Fieser rule can be used to calculate the absorption maxima of conjugated dyes, unsaturated ketones, aromatic compounds. But for this video, we will discuss only about the conjugated dienes. Conjugated dienes can be of two types, acyclic dienes and cyclic dienes. Let us first have a look on both the types of dienes. Acyclic dienes can exist in the form of S-cis and S-trans isomers. Generally, dienes can exist in S-trans isomers more than S cis isomers because of the less steric crowding, which makes it to absorb at longer wavelengths due to proper overlap of these pi orbitals. However, when this diene is substituted, then the preference of their isomers also changes, which also changes the lambda max values. Like here, the methyl groups are creating steric crowding and it prefers S cis form uh, more as compared to the S trans isomer. From these examples, one thing is clear that with the substitution, the lambda max values changes and we need to consider the environment of the conjugated diene while calculating lambda max values. Cyclic dienes. Here the lambda max values are different for different isomers. According to Woodward Fieser rule, to calculate the lambda max values, we need to go step by step. For that, first we need to have the parent value, then we add some increments and also we add the values of oxochromes. Before going to the actual calculations, let us first understand some terms like what are the acyclic dienes, what are the cyclic dienes, what are the acyclic dienes, homoannular conjugated dienes, heteroannular conjugated dienes and what are the increments and what are the alkyl substituents, ring residues and exocyclic double bonds. Let us first, first understand all these terms then we will start calculating the lambda max values. These are some of the examples of acyclic dienes. This is clearly the acyclic diene. This is also acyclic diene. Now we will see that this double bond is not conjugated to these two double bonds. So this is not in the conjugation. So we will not consider it as the conjugated system. Okay. Now here, this is the acyclic diene, although the rings are present over here, but the conjugated system includes only the acyclic. Here, this is also considered as the acyclic diene. This is acyclic diene and here also this is acyclic diene. In case of cyclic dienes, when both the double bonds are the part of the rings are called the cyclic dienes. Here, the third double bond of course is in the conjugation with the other two double bonds but these two double bonds, these conjugated dienes are uh, the part of the ring system so we will consider it as the cyclic diene. This is also the cyclic diene. 
Homo annular dienes and hetero annular dienes. Homo annular dienes are the dienes in which both the double bonds are the part of the same ring. Like in this first molecule, the both the double bonds are in ring B. Here also both double bonds are in ring B. In this third molecule also, the double bond is the part of ring A. Now you may also see this kind of uh, position of double bonds like this. Now this molecule and this molecule, these are the same molecules. This is just the position of this second bond which is uh, placed either the left or the right hand side of this junction bond. Okay, but otherwise both the molecules are same. So this is also a, a homoannular diene, not the heteroannular diene. In case of heteroannular diene, both the double bonds are the part of different rings. Like the first bond is uh, in ring A and the second one is in ring B. Here also one double bond is ring uh, is in ring A and the second double bond is in ring B. Alkyl substituents. Now let us have a system, the conjugated system. This is our conjugated system. Okay. Now let us see what are the substitutions on this system. This is one methyl group attached to this. We will go one by one to the conjugated system carbons. Like these are the four carbon atoms. One, two, three. Four. We will look at the substitutions on all the four carbon atoms. On the first carbon atom, there is one methyl. This is another methyl. There is no substitution on second carbon, no substitution on third carbon. On the fourth carbon, there is one methyl and one this group. Okay. This double bond is not the part of conjugation system because this is not conjugated to these two double bonds. Okay, so this is isolated double bond. We have only two double bonds which are in conjugation. Now here we have four alkyl substituents. Okay, now what are ring residues? Ring residues are again uh, like, uh, let us highlight the conjugation. This is our conjugated system. Okay, now here these are the substitution. This is 1 carbon, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. There are 6 carbon atoms which are in conjugation. So to the first carbon atom, let us number all these carbons, 5 and 6. To the first carbon atom, there is one substitution and this substitution is the part of the ring. So this is called the ring residue. Although this is uh, similar uh, like this alkyl substituent, but uh, the only difference between these two alkyl substituent and the ring residue is that this substitution is the part of the ring and here in alkyl substituent, uh, the substitution is not the part of the ring. Okay. Now to the second carbon, there is no substitution. To the third carbon, there is one substitution. Okay, which is also ring residue. Fourth, fifth, both the carbons uh, do not have any substitution. To the sixth carbon, there are two substituents. Okay, so in total, we have four ring residues in this molecule. Now, let us see the ring residues in the second molecule. Here, the first carbon has two ring residues here there is no substitution no substitution to the fourth carbon again there are four rings residues so here also we have four ring residues okay now if we look at the third molecule we have one two three and four these are the four conjugated carbons here is one substitution, here is another substitution. So we have two ring residues in this molecule. Now the exocyclic double bonds. Exocyclic double bonds are the bonds 
when they are present like this the one of the carbon is the part of the ring and there is another carbon which is not the part of that ring okay if we have any five membered ring this is also exocyclic double bond in case of four membered ring this is exocyclic double bond okay now let us see that how many exocyclic double bonds are there in this molecule we have three rings a b and c let us take uh, all the double bonds one by one the first double bond uh, in uh, in this double bond both the carbons are the part of the same ring so this is not exocyclic to any of the ring let us look at this double bond this double bond is exocyclic to ring a because it is present like this so this is exocyclic double bond now the third double bond this is exocyclic to ring c because it is present like this so we have two exocyclic double bonds exocyclic double bonds in the first molecule now in the second molecule the first double bond this is exocyclic to this ring okay because this is like this and to ring b this double bond is also exocyclic to ring b so we have two exocyclic double bonds in the third molecule this double bond is also exocyclic to this ring a so here we have one exocyclic double bond this bond is not exocyclic because both the carbon atoms are the part of the same ring okay so these are the exocyclic double bonds now according to Wood uh, woodward fisher rule uh, we have these are the uh, parent values for the acyclic conjugated dienes or the heteroannular conjugated dienes what was uh, the heterocyclic conjugated di diene heterocyclic means sorry heteroannular means when both the double bonds are not the part of same ring both the double bonds are in different rings so heteroannular conjugated dienes the base value is 215 for homoannular conjugated dienes the base value is 253 for acyclic trienes the base value is 245 and for the increments for one alkyl substitute or the ring residues we have to add 5 nanometer for one exocyclic double bond we have to add 5 nanometer for one double bond extending conjugation one double bond extending conjugation means that all these values this base values are for dienes only for example we have this molecule if there is one double bond over here second is here and third is here the base value for homoannular conjugated dienes will be 253 but there is another double bond which is extending the conjugation these base values are for only two double bonds okay so third double bond is extending the conjugation then we will add 30 over here in the base value okay then we will get the all the values uh, for this uh, lambda max and in the conjugated system if these types of oxochromes are present then we will add their respective values okay that will we will see with the example let us take first example in this molecule let us first highlight the conjugated system this is the conjugated system now the parent value would be for heteroannular conjugated diene for heteroannular conjugated diene the value is 215 so parent value is 215 now let us see uh, that uh, for the increment uh, how many alkyl substituents or the ring residues it has this is the first carbon second carbon third carbon and the fourth carbon this is first ring residue no substitution there is one substitution second ring residue there is third ring residues so we have three ring residues and for one ring residue the value is 5 so 5 multiplied by 3 total value is 15 now 
नेक्स्ट इज एक्सोसाइक्लिक डबल बॉन्ड ओके फॉर वन एक्सोसाइक्लिक डबल बॉन्ड द वैल्यू इज फाइव नैनोमीटर ना लेट एस सी हाउ मैनी एक्सोसाइक्लिक डबल बॉन्ड्स वी हैव दिस डबल बॉन्ड इज नॉट एक्सोसाइक्लिक टू एनी ऑफ द रिंग द सेकेंड डबल बॉन्ड इज एक्सोसाइक्लिक टू रिंग ए सो वी हैव वन एक्सोसाइक्लिक डबल बॉन्ड नाउ लेट एस एज टू फिफ्टीन प्लस फिफ्टीन प्लस फाइव it becomes 235 so lambda max for this molecule is 235 nanometers okay let us have more examples this is another example here let us highlight the conjugated system this is the conjugated system and uh, now the parent value will correspond to heteroannular diene because both the double bonds are in different rings so 215 is the parent value now let us see the ring residues there is one ring residue to the first carbon second carbon no substitution third carbon second ring residue fourth carbon there is third ring residue so we have three ring residues 3 multiplied by 5 because 5 uh, is for one ring residue so 3 multiplied by 5 is equal to 15 now exocyclic double bonds uh, this is not exocyclic to any of the ring this is exocyclic to ring a so we have one exocyclic double bond okay now this conjugated system also contain one oxochrome which is o r this is o r okay uh so let us look at the table for 1 or the value is 6 nanometer so we will add uh the oxochrome value corresponding to or 6 nanometer now the total value becomes 215 plus 15 plus 5 plus 6 241 nanometer so the lambda max for this well this molecule is 241 nanometers next example let us highlight all the conjugated system in all the three molecules here a uh, parent value correspond to heteroannular uh, 215 is the parent value first ring residue second ring residue then third ring residue we have three ring residues so value is 15 exocyclic double bond this double bond is exocyclic to ring b so one exocyclic double bond total value is 235 for second molecule this is ring a this is ring b now both the double bonds are the part of one ring so parent value will become 253 nanometer now we have one two and three ring residues okay the total value is 15 for three ring three ring residues uh now let us see that how many exocyclic double bonds are there this is not exocyclic but this double bond is exocyclic to ring b so we have one exocyclic double bond the total value becomes 273 nanometer in case of the third molecule the parent value will be uh, now we have uh, three double bonds and uh, these two double bonds are heteroannular so the base value will be 215 okay now let us see the ring residues when we calculate the ring residues we extend all the conjugation up to uh, up to all the double bonds okay so this is first ring residue let us move towards the system this is second ring residue we go to this carbon then this carbon then this carbon we have third ring residue we go to this this is fourth ring residue and this is fifth ring residue now how come this is the fifth ring residue because when we draw the bracket like this it means we are showing the part of the ring only this is ring a this is ring b this is ring c this is ring d now this is not the open uh, open chain 
in the uh, after c ring uh, here we have d ring also that's why the brackets uh, bracket is shown uh, for example if we want to show this molecule like ring a and ring b if we want to show half of the molecule only then we can draw it like this this and this and we will put the bracket like this okay it shows that there is a ring uh, and uh, we are not interested in that part we are interested in this part only that's why we are showing half of the ring but there is definitely a ring so similarly here the there is uh, d ring over here but we are not interested in that ring uh, so we are showing the a b c rings only and only the part of ring d okay so these two substituents are the part of the ring d so that's why these are also the rings uh, ring residues okay so total we have 1 2 3 4 and 5 five rings re residues so the total value becomes 25 now the parent value was 215 for diene but here we have three double bonds okay um, it means uh, the third double bond is extending the conjugation so we will add value 30 for extra double bond now let us have a look at the exocyclic double bonds this is string a b c and d now let us see uh, how many exocyclic double bonds we have this is first double bond is it exocyclic to any of the ring this is exocyclic to ring b okay because it is like this okay so this one is exocyclic the second double bond this is not exocyclic cyclic to any of the ring the third double bond this is exocyclic to ring b this double bond is exocyclic to ring b and also we know that this is ring d this is also exocyclic to ring d okay so in total we have one two and three we have total three exocyclic double bonds over here so here the total value becomes 15 now the total value is 285 after the addition of all the increments there are some more examples for practice from these examples let us have a look on the last one in the last example we have three double bonds one two and three now, while taking the parent value, there may be a confusion that two of the double bonds are homoannular, but it can also be considered as heteroannular. But whenever there is a choice between selecting whether we have to take the parent value of homoannular or heteroannular, then we always take the parent value of homoannular. For this compound, in fact for this compound also and for this compound also all the three compounds have the option of taking the parent value as homo or heteroannular in all the three compounds we will take homoannular as the parent value so 253 will be the base value now let us have the look on the ring residues 1 2 uh, 3 4 and 5 we have five ring residues. Five multiplied by five is equal to twenty-five for ring residues. Now we have one double bond extending conjugation because the base value was for only two double bonds. Third, uh, third double bond is extending the conjugation. We will have to add one value that is thirty. Now exocyclic double bonds. Let us have a look that how many of the double bonds are exocyclic in this compound. This double bond is exocyclic to ring A. This double bond 
is exocyclic to ring C and this double bond is exocyclic to ring B. So we have total three exocyclic double bonds and the value for one exocyclic double bond is 5 then total value becomes 15. Now let us add 253 plus 25 plus 30 plus 15 it becomes 323 nanometers. There are some more compounds for the practice of calculating lambda max values. In case you feel any kind of problem in calculating the lambda max values, you can leave a comment below. I will definitely reply to your comments. In the fourth video of this series, we will discuss about the Woodward Fieser rule for alpha beta unsaturated ketones. Till then, stay tuned and have a great time. Bye bye.